Uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, Thomas Lugerberg. Um, Thomas is a Senior Director for Silicon Photonics Products at Intel, um, where he's responsible for the integrated and co-packaged photonics product and technology roadmap. Um, from 2004 to 2015, he was at Source Photonics, serving as in various roles in product management and R&D management, most recently as Executive VP of Product Line Management. And prior to Source Photonics, he was with Agility Communications, and Thomas holds a PhD in Electrical Engineering from the University of California, Santa Barbara, and an MSEE from Technical University of Denmark. Thomas, thanks very much. Great. Thank you, Rob, for the introduction, and, and thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, if you looked at the program, I'm filling in for Robert Bloom, who did, unfortunately could not make it today, um, but I'm glad to get the chance here to talk about our effort here in, in, in this area. I hope you can all see my, my screen right now. Um, yep. I'm going to start it's a little bit uh, uh, along the lines of where Manish was, was going, and, and I'd like to look at the chart here because this is something that we've, we've in one form or another, looked at. Um, at least as long as I've been been working on silicon photonics at, at Intel now six years or plus, um, and and really looking at at sort of where does the technology go? What's the roadmap for for integration and and how we view um, view our position here? And of course, it starts to the left, and this is where we what we've been working on in the in the Ethernet data center networks with, with pluggable optics, and then there's a rich and comprehensive roadmap there. It's not going away anytime soon. Um, from from now at 800 gig and beyond, and there's there's a large volume in that being built and in, in the in the field now five five million plus units. Uh, so on the back on that, we have built a a healthy infrastructure and, and high volume capability that that now can be leveraged into sort of the next step. Um, it's also clear as, as even though we can we, we build with these pluggable modules, as Manish pointed out, we're increasingly facing challenges even in that application that uh, was pluggable and and. When he's looked at, at, at the, how many of the links are, are exceeding the loss budget, um, another way of looking at it that, that I like to think of is if, if we think about moving bits from a switch to a switch across hundreds of meters, how much energy are we spending on, on the non-value at 12 inches, first and last 12 inches, just to get to the front plate? And as we move up in, in speed, more and more is just wasted on, on, uh, on, on that, uh, both in, in share of the, of the power budget, but also in... in uh, just in total total watts. So the answer is like Manish said, let's put let's put the photonics inside. Um, and then the way this is conceived, at least in first generation, is is really miniaturized. There's no repartitioning or sort of changing the, the functional blocks, but let's move the transceivers inside the packets, make them smaller, uh, spend lose use less power, but but really tap into and leverage. Uh, the existing ecosystem and, and multi-source environment. And, and, and that's one way of doing it. And with that, we can get um, some meaningful power savings uh, while still interoperate and, and, and not reset the whole thing. Um, but there's some limits to how, how far that can, that can be taken. But that's certainly something that we're working on. And I'll show one or two slides on, on where that stands and where we think that's, that's heading. Uh, as we take integration further, and now we're getting into what we think of as, as XPU, optical IO, or, or compute platforms, um, we're now moving moving closer to to the to the um, value add digital logic, and whether that's an XPU or an FPGA or or any kind of SOC that needs high high bandwidth, um, we're unconstraining ourselves, as I say, from past decisions on Ethernet uh, or past optimization points, and what's the best we can can do, and how do we deliver the most bandwidth, the highest density, and, and the best uh, power efficiency for, for, for that. And I'll show our thoughts on that, where we think that is, is heading and, and on our work in, in that area. But first, on the, on the Ethernet switch, um, showed various versions of this before. We, we, we build a system in order to, to learn and to understand constraints and, uh, and capabilities. So this is a, is a fully functional uh, live traffic Ethernet switch. Um, with co-packaged optics, and it's, it's built around a, a 12.8 T switch. We designed for 25, but 12.8 was what eventually made it in there uh, from availability. Uh, co-packaged with these 1.6 terabit per second uh, engines um, or parallel optics, so you can think of it as four 400 gig DR4s. Socketed as we as we talked about to have that um, abstraction or standardization point, uh, which is here to the to the right. We have four of these engines around the, the switch here on the with the retention hardware here. Um, uh, 
heat pull ups to heat pipes to to heat sinking out here. We removed the big heat sink that, that takes care of the, the, the 300 watt of, of switch in there. Um, and then the same sockets accommodate flyover cables, so we can bring bandwidth to the front plate for, for pluggables or for the deck cables or for cover back planes, uh, however you, you want to, to design the system. Um, and, and a lot was, was learned from that, and, and as, as I think we think about it, that, that's, um, we're not taking the learnings from, from, from what we did here into to product direction for, for CPO, for Ethernet switches, but also there's learning and packaging and devices that will, will benefit when we look at the compute platforms and the optical I.O. for that purpose. But, but even here as a first iteration, uh, we saw something that looked like 40x bandwidth density versus a pluggable module and 30% power reduction um, in this first iteration here. And I think that's that's uh, that's promising and that shows some of the potential for for what we can what we can achieve with uh, with co-packaging. Uh, the, the core of, of the, these optical engines, protonic engines, with this 1.6 T uh, transmitter chip. And I, I kept that in here because it really highlights some of the, the, the benefits and, and, and opportunities for, for, for high degree of integration. So what we're showing here is, is the 1.6 T transmitter chip. Uh, like I said, it's 16 channels of 100 D parallel uh, optics. So we have the, 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 the photons around from a laser array, have redundant lasers for, for reliability. Um, through a, a setup of the two pi one optical switches to pick which of the redundant lasers we're firing up, 100 gig micro ring resonator modulators for, um, for, for data encoding, and then um, around the edge here to mode converters and deep grooves. And, and that's really designed to enable um, efficient, scalable assembly, uh, ideally with passive alignment into these deep grooves uh, here. So that's what that's what the transmitter looks like, and that's what we're the, the, a lot of the device uh, learning here is going to deliver it into to, to subsequent uh, developments for for this. Um, what we're what is coming into a product is really for for next generation 3.2 T uh, photonics engine, and we're now leading with with uh, the, the sort of lead configuration here is a WDM version, so eight ports of 400 gig FR4, um, still in socketed. Uh, so self-contained transceiver arrays, um, consistent with with the statement of of, of of not repartitioning and still leveraging the existing ecosystem here. We're adding the the laser array onto to the chip and also MUX and, and DMUX. So again, we have a fully self-contained optical system here, and and I think it matters not only for for sort of performance and power, but but also for manufacturability and cost. So. Because the laser is on here, because all the, the MOXs and DMOXs, everything is on here, we can actually test this at, at wafer level and, 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 and really implement the concept of known good die um, into the optic space here. And there's no back end or assembly for, for the optics that, 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 that we have to go through. Um, we're making some, some advances in packaging versus I've demonstrated to, to, to achieve 4x improvement in bandwidth density and in some signal uh, integrity. Um, but really, it's all directed at it's, it's, it's aligning with the emerging standard in OIF and, 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 and elsewhere. Uh, and we're committed to, to really track that influence and, and track what happens at OIF and, and elsewhere so that, that this truly becomes a part of a, a healthy ecosystem. Uh, but the landing here is, is a 3.2T engine aligned with the 50T switches in, in 2024 kind of timeframe. Uh, so that's what we're seeing happening on the network side. And I think the, the, um, the other part of sort of parallel was when I talk about what happens when we bring things even closer and we're unconstrained from these uh, ecosystem and, and legacy issues of, of, of networking and try and optimize for, for, for these specific applications. Um, so, so what we've been working on for a while now is this co-optical IO attached to, to an XPU. And uh, this is kind of the cartoon version of, of, of this concept here. So we have uh, the, the host IC uh, generically an XPU here that's co-packaged using, uh, in our case, an embedded bridge to, to really leverage the maximum density and, and power efficiency on the, on the in-package that I need to connect here. And then this optical tile consists of a single electrical uh, IC that has driver, the CDR, um, TIA, some control circuits, and then the photonic uh, chip with, with the lasers and, uh, and, and uh, detectors and, and MOXs, DMOXs, and so on. So that's built as, as, a, as a single stack fiber attached. And then I said co-packaged into to the, uh, to the uh, embedded bridge here. 
the the uh, where we think we can take this sort of in in, in first in Gen one and Gen one point five. It's a very high bandwidth of a terabit per second per fiber. Um, we can reach hundreds of meters. We don't think that's the sweet spot, but but as, as we all know, once you you paid the power overhead of, of converting to photons, we, we can go, it's cheap to go far. Um, the sweet spot is probably 10 meter, tens, few tens of meters, but the, but the capability is certain there for, for more. Um, we shoreline density, we have line of sight to something that's that's about four times better than, than what we think is the right reference in this time frame, which would be PCIe uh, six port. Um, and, and that's achieved by using this parallel a high density interface through the uh, through the embedded uh, bridge in the package. Uh, again, energy efficiency uh, in line with or, or slightly better than PCI six port, but but with the with the longer reach, obviously, and the high density is, is the benefit. And and the goal and the expectation is that we can do all this with with a minimal incremental latency relative to a to a copper port. Uh, so that's kind of what we set out as as a its goal, but it but the goal informed by by line of sight to to landing these metrics here in, in a you know in a manner that's consistent with with the with the products uh, and, and high volume manufacturing. Um, so, what does it look like with the optical plane? So we have this is the chip that we we built and and that uh, that is intended to achieve what what we saw on the previous page. Uh, it's realized as eight fiber pairs, uh, each running eight wavelengths at sixty four gig gigabit per second NRC. I think maybe that's worth a discussion at some point on, on what is the right format, what is the, the optical interface. We pick 64 gig NRC because uh, we want to go as fast as we can while staying at NRC. It, it lines up well with, with PCIe or CXL type of infrastructure. Uh, we think NRC is, is where we'll get the right, um, the, the right performance in terms of, of power and also latency. So again, if I walk around the, the die here, along with the photons, we have a eight wavelength laser array. Um, see performance here on the, on the bottom right. So we're pretty pretty pleased with what we get there. Very reproducible, controllable channel spacing, very uniform performance across the, the, the wavelength, uh, well, including over temperature, which is, is not shown here. Um, that gets muxed and then split into eight, eight lanes, squeezing the eight plate fibers. Each lane runs down a cascaded set of, of rings, modulators, uh, encoding the, the data on there. And then through SOAs, again, mode converters and V groups onto the fiber, coming back through uh, amplifiers. And then we use again uh, ring modulator or ring uh, resonators for, for, for DMOX uh, purposes. Um, we also have some not seen here, but there's structures yet to manage uh, polarization. So we don't have any need for control or, or prior knowledge of the in, incoming signal here. So it's really intended to, to be, again, a fully self-contained optical system here um, that, that can exist in a, in a, um, in a true field deployment. Uh, so that's, that's what we're, we, we've built this and, and, and we're looking at that now. We're developing the packages and looking at how to attach that to, to, uh, to different options for, for host uh, silicon and, and have some, some, uh, some plans in that that we can maybe able to talk about in another, another setting. Um, I think the, the other, the last thing is in terms of what can be achieved and, and, and where are we ready in terms of devices and technology, but we also want to make sure that, that the path we, we go down is, is one that's scalable and, and we don't have a single generation uh, solution here. So we looked at, at where can we take this and this is not intended to, to by any stretch be a, a, a disclosure of product plans or, or anything even close to that. But we're just looking at, we have different vectors to, to improve our, our bandwidth and performance here. Uh, we can add more wavelengths. So 8, 16, 32 is certainly a scalability path. Um, we're, we're building a 32 and 64 gig NRC right now. We have, we have in lab, and I think we've, we've published uh, performance consistent with 128 gig NRC for, for the same type of ring modulators. We can add fiber count. And then there's a, a one-time benefit of, of, of using two polarizations to this. So we think that, that without making, without inventing new, new physics or dramatically change the architecture, we have, we have a nice runway of, of, of doubling this uh, maybe six times or so, the bandwidth of the Nafana Ino tile. Um, and I think that's, that's, uh, that's the, the sort of the last checkpoint we had on that. Uh, so that, that highlights where we're seeing what we're working on right now, and what we see as, as the initial intercept for these compute uh, platform optical interfaces. Now, 
I don't know how I'm doing with time, but I'll stop here and leave some time for, for questions, hopefully. That's great. Thanks. Thanks very much, Thomas. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll come back to some of the performance metrics that you uh, posed as targets here uh, as, when we get to the panel discussion a bit later on. Um, we do have uh, one uh, question that came in on the chat. Could you comment on the laser heater on slide four, please? Slide four. On the laser heater, you, you, I think uh, and then where your bullet number two, it says uh, integrated heaters. Oh, and laser. yes. So that's on, that's on the switches. So, so that's to, to align the switch and, and make a selection between the, the two lasers and the redundant pair. So, so the transmitter is realized as full one-to-one -one redundancy per channel. So that's why we have a two by 16 array here. And then the integrated heater here is, is to, is to, to uh, control the, the, the switch here to pick the laser that we want to, uh, that we want to activate. Got it. Great. Well, thanks again, Thomas. Very interesting talk. Thank you. Okay, so uh, it's my pleasure that's to introduce. One, one quick question. Sorry. It's sort of generally applicable to a lot of the people though, which is what granularity does everybody want, right? So it's great you're going to what, 64 terabits for fiber. Yeah. <laughs> what do the architecture guys really want? That sounds like an awful lot of data going yeah. in one direction. And yeah. with if that fiber were to break or something, then obviously it's both. Yeah. So what, what is the right granularity? Is that beyond it or? I don't think there is an answer. And, and, and there was a little bit of a cop out comment on that slide saying that, that the exact scaling, when do we add wavelength versus when do we add speed or fiber? Really depends on on considerations like what you bring up there, John. I, I think I don't think there is a there is a clear answer. Um, there will certainly be cases where you care a great deal about radix and and, and you would want to add fibers. Um, and, and there may be other cases where, where it's more important to absolutely do the best you can in density and, and stay as much you can on, on a single fiber. Um, so I don't I, I don't want to pre sort of judge what the answer is six years from now, but but uh, but I think that there's there's the there's multiple vectors to go about it here, and I think that's the point that we can scale the bandwidth along different uh, different approaches. If I could ask one other question, it seems to me like your density is at least four times higher than say the hundred gigabit transceivers that you sold before. So does that roughly correspond to four times cheaper price per bit? Sort of. <laughs> I mean, because in the end, isn't yeah. is silicon area? By far your dominant cost. Yeah, um, there is absolutely a, a very significant improvement in, in what the cost is if we try to project out in maturity and volume. Um, I'd probably hesitate to put a specific number number right now, but I, I think I, I would. I don't think that the pluggable module cost is is a very good indicator for what copagus optics should cost once it's mature and in volume. I, I think it's, 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 a, it's a discontinuity in that curve. Okay. It's, it's, kind of, it, it's, it's, it's hard and day one is difficult and you know how it's coming up these curves on, on yield and learning and all that. But, but it, what we care about is what does it look like in maturity when, when, when we've shipped a lot of these. And I think that's a completely different picture than a, than a plug module. We had, we had one more uh, comment. Uh, that, uh, actually, our, our next speaker, maybe Chris. Um, Chris Cole raised the question uh, on the RFC twenty twenty one demo. The density improvements listed as forty x. And his observation is, it looks like it would be difficult to even double the assembly. I don't know whether you could comment on that, Thomas. Yeah, the 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 forty x. I think is just taking what's the size of a of a pluggable module and how big is our one point six t engine and, and normalized the bandwidth. And then the, the OIF uh, spec is, is, uh, sl is a little bit smaller than, than what we had in our demonstration at twice the bandwidth. Um, so, so that's the, the slightly better than doubling or, or, or in, the next, in the next iteration. Um, but the, I mean, we, we can argue what the right reference points are and all that, but, but the, certainly what's clear is that it's a very significant increase in, in, uh, in, in the intensity that we can, we can derive out of this. Yep. Very good. Well, thank you again.